Hey guys, it's Alyssa Marie here. Welcome back to my channel. I know I sound a little bit different. I do have a cold, but it's finally on its way out. So I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit off today. But for today's video, I want to chat all about the five most common curly girl problems that I've come across, that some of my friends have come across, some of my coworkers have come across and offer some solutions for those problems. If you are a curly girl, naturalista, you are gonna be able to relate to this. Having curly hair is so fun, but it is not a walk in the park, so I figure why not just jump on here and we can chat, we can have some discussion going on on the comments below. So if you're interested in finding out some cool solutions to a few common curly girl problems, just continue to watch. All right, so I'm gonna go in order from number five all the way up to number one, like number one being being the most common curly girl problem that we all face. So you gotta make sure to watch all the way to the end to see what the solution is for the number one curly girl issue. All right, so number five on my list is finding fancy hairstyles for like big events. That can always be a struggle. I think a lot of people tend to want to straighten their curly hair when it comes to having a big event. It can kind of be tricky to figure out like, what am I going to do with my curls to make them look a little fancy? Like, what can I do to make them look a little bit different? So we're lucky nowadays, there's social media out there. So you can go up on Pinterest and do some research and go on Instagram, maybe search up some hashtags and see what you can find on there. Um, but for me, I have like two general things that you can always fall back on when you have a big event. And what I mean by that is that no matter like how long your hair is, there are two go-to like styles that you can do to just kind of look a little bit different or look a little bit more fancy and put together. My first one is a side part and that's something so simple but there's so many different like ways that you can make a side part pop. So like for my hair, it's kind of just a side part and that's it because I have no hair. But for longer curly hair, you can do a side part with a slick pack ponytail. You could do a side part with your hair sitting on your shoulder on one side. You can do so many things with a side part and I just feel like that's just one way to kind of switch it up. The second thing that you can do is slick that hair. So slick down sides, you can slick down one side with the side part. One of my go-to hairstyles is slicking down the sides of my hair and giving myself like a cute little faux hawk. I definitely think like when you see someone with like slick back hair, it looks more sleek, it looks more clean and crisp and that'll give you again that effect that you want, something different for that big event that's coming up. All right, so the number four common curly girl problem I would say is having to travel with all of your curly girl products. There is no such thing as using one product in curly hair. Like that's just not a thing, you know? It's like you kind of want to bring everything with you just to make sure that you're covered on all bases. Um, and that can be a huge hassle. Curly girl products come in big jars. They come in tall bottles. One option is to kind of really just be a little bit more strict on yourself. So I would say pick one leave-in conditioner, one gel, and then just purchase some little mini um, traveling size bottles and put it in there instead of having to travel with the full size product. Another tip would be to do some protective styling. So that way you'll really cut down the amount of products that you're gonna need to bring if you need to bring any. You might need like some oil to kind of just massage your scalp every other day or so. But yeah, I think protective styling is awesome. It's not only good for your hair, but it'll even save you some time as well as space in that suitcase. All right, so my number three curly girl problem I would say is wash day. Wash day for a curly girl is not easy. And I feel like I luck out with my hair. I pretty much have none so it's a little bit easier for me when you have longer curly hair, you've got to detangle. It's just, it's like a whole day process. So even though I don't have to deal with that long curly hair yet, cause I'm on my way there. I have found two things that actually make my wash day turn out a little bit better. It makes my hair just behave a little bit better. So my tip would be to use a pre-poo. So by pre-poo, I mean like a treatment that you put in your hair before you go ahead and wash it. So there's many 
different things that you can put in your hair to use as a pre-poop. Like I used to use coconut oil and let that sit in my hair for a few hours. My current favorite product is the pre-poo conditioner by Care Care. This stuff is amazing. When I tell, like I legit had like a full week of a good, like I had a good hair week. It also made my hair much more easy to detangle. Yes, she's long enough to get knotted now. My hair just seemed happier, in a better mood, and we just started off wash day on the right foot. The second thing that I love to use on wash day is my hot head. This is another thing that really makes my hair happy. If your hair is happy, then you ain't gonna have a stressful wash day, and this guy makes my hair really happy. So what this is, it's kind of like a thicker version of a shower cap. It's got these beads inside here. So once you've got your deep conditioner in your hair, you stick this in the microwave, you heat it up for a little bit, and then put it on your head, and that way you've got some heat applied to your deep conditioner, which will allow the hair shaft to open up and it'll just really soak in all of that greatness from your deep conditioner. Deep conditioned hair is happy hair which equals a happy girl, which equals a less stressful wash day. So my number two curly girl problem would be bad hair days. Curly hair has a mind of its own. My favorite thing to do for a bad hair day is to disguise it. You disguise it by using a headband. If you wake up on a Saturday and just have no idea what to do, just pop this bad boy in your head, you gonna look cute, I'm telling you. This like just makes a statement in your wardrobe, like I just, oh, I can't tell you enough how much I love headbands. I actually just recently posted a video of how I like to apply my headbands. So if you want to go and check that out, I will post that in the cards somewhere up here so you can check that out. Bobby pins are also going to be your best friend on a bad hair day. Maybe it's just the front of your hair that's a bit frizzy and the rest looks okay. Just pin that sucker back and you are good to go. So make sure you always got your bobby pins handy. Alright, so the number one curly girl problem is a problem that I feel like all of us face all the time. Like it's the number one thing that you are trying to prevent happening to your hair. And that is frizz. Say it with me. I know that every single curly girl deals with frizz. There's no such thing as a curly girl who has no frizz. Like instead of a bad hair day where you're just happy to disguise it for frizz, you kind of just want to prevent it in the first place. I don't know man, I have a love-hate relationship with frizz to be very honest. There's a certain level of frizz that just gives me a level of volume that is just magical. But at the same time, frizzy curls are just not the move. So I think when it comes to frizz, it's really about moisture retention. I think one of the number one things is oils. I think oils are going to be your best friend. It helps to seal your hair shaft. So once you've moisturized your hair and stuff, I think sealing it with oils is always a major key. The next thing you should do is definitely invest in either a silk bonnet to wrap your hair in every night, or if you're like me and you hate wearing the bonnets, then invest in a silk pillowcase. So this is my pillow. As you can see, it looks like kind of shiny because it's got the silk pillowcase on it. I think I think I might have bought this from Bed Bath & Beyond. You can find them anywhere, Amazon, Walmart, Target, wherever. Sleeping on cotton pillowcases really just dry out your hair. Cotton is very absorbent, so the whole night you are, it's just sucking the moisture out of your hair that you're so desperately trying to keep in there. And it also, just the type of material can create a lot of friction when you're like tossing and turning in the night. And then it's like a recipe for frizz because you wake up and your hair looks like a frizzy mess. So I would definitely suggest that you protect your hair at night while you sleep. Another tip for frizz is resisting touching your hair. I am the worst. My hands are constantly in my hair and it's so bad. I have the worst case of hand and hair syndrome. I think because I'm so new to natural hair, I still think it's like, oh my god, I have curls in my hair. So I really, I'll just sit in the car and twirl my hair. I'll sit at work on my desk, twirl my hair. It's so bad. I'm really trying to get out of the habit of it. Um, so if you're not in the habit of it, don't start now. Keep your hands out of your hair. My last tip 
slash solution to frizzy hair is using the right products. So earlier I said that oil is a major key. Another major key is using products that are like a snotty consistency so like any curl maker defining curl custard that has like it just when you look at it it jiggles and it looks like snot those are gonna be your frizz busters right there i use that today um, my favorite is the curl maker by camille rose the defining custard by cara care part of their natural textures line is also really cool um this is it here so i'm gonna show you what i mean by like a snotty texture so you see here like how it's jiggly and just it legit like just looks snotty anything of that consistency I promise you is really just going to grab hold of them curls and it's really gonna fight that frizz away or at least I find that that works best for my hair ta-da that's it guys those were my top solutions to my what I think are the top five most common curly girl problems um, I really hope this is helpful for you. I'm still learning every single day as my hair grows. It continues to change, but I'm really just trying to share as much as I possibly can as soon as I learn it. You know, I want to see everyone embrace their curls and love their curls and just just be prideful in your natural hair. So if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you love me today, even with my cold, congested voice, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, guys, so you can keep up with me in my natural hair journey. I will catch you guys in my next video, which I will just conveniently leave for you right here. Bye.